Hello there, my name is John Doe. I'm of course right here in my little humble abode in Tokyo, Japan. We're going to do another Ghost Letters report. So, if you're not aware by now, we have a bit of a controversy going on at um, NHK. NHK is a Nippon broadcasting company, uh, which is state-owned, but supposedly maintains a neutral independence. What he recently came out and said, which he said a few controversial things, but his most controversial statement was regarding wartime sex slaves under Imperial Japan. Uh, you should be aware of what that is by now. It's where the Japanese Imperial Army forced women into sexual service for the Imperial, Imperial Army soldiers. Now, what he has basically said is this. He said, well, every country does this during times of war, so I don't see what the big deal is. Now, number one, and I'll put some links later, you can see exact quotes and things, but number one, we would like to point out that it doesn't matter if another country has or has not put women in a forced sex slavery for the benefit of an army. What is important is that Japan did that. And you cannot lessen the blame or soften the actual incidents that went on simply by saying, well, this is common. We, I don't understand why people are upset. Because you, your country did it. Japan did that. And you have to take full 100% responsibility. You cannot say other countries did it. So I don't understand why people are upset. You can't say, well, it was necessary. You know, as um, some other leaders in Japan have said in recent years. It doesn't work that way. Especially considering that a large majority of those women, and it's right around 200,000 women, were, of, were Koreans during a time when Korea was occupied by the Japanese Imperial Army. Now, those women from many other countries were forced into this, but a lot of them are from Korea. And on that note, you know, he decided to double down, all right? You know, he just, he just can't say that, you know, when... Um, when he was asked about possible compensation for the surviving women in Korea, he said, well, that's already been settled in 1965, and we had a treaty that normalized relations. The reason that these women are asking for that is because Japan gave that money to the Korean government, excuse me, South Korean government, and the South Korean government was so corrupt at the time that and it was under a military strongman rule rule at the time. They just took that money and used it, to, you know, for government purposes. The actual women who were supposed to get the money never got it. So that's why they're asking for personal compensation from the Japanese government itself, because the Japanese government is responsible for what happened. Now, interesting enough, there's been many calls for his resignation. Over 3,300 viewers of NHK have um, made, wrote in letters, emails, things like that, demanding his resignation after making these type of comments. But Mohi, or Mohi, however he wishes to pronounce his name, has refused it, saying, I will not step down. Those are my personal opinions. But he has kind of tried to apologize and backtrack here a bit by saying it was extremely inappropriate and, you know, I don't know the rules and I'm new about what to say and when and where I can say things and all this. That's typical in Japanese politics when someone gets busted or someone says something crazy. They say, oh, well, you know, I'm ignorant. I'm stupid. I'm an idiot. You know, forgive me. Hey, I don't know what I'm doing here. If you don't know what you're doing, and you are 
you don't know the rules and you don't know how to go about things, then why are you in that position? Now, you know we have to have a process for appointing these type of guys to NHK, but it's well known that um, this guy was Shinzo Abe's personal preference. He wanted this guy. So, wouldn't you want to avoid any type of problems by not putting someone like that in a position of power? The head, the head of the NHK? Of course not. Because if this man is someone that Shinzo Abe personally wanted, well then Shinzo Abe knows this man's opinions and knows this man is not very good at shutting up, at least. He'll let it fly out of his mouth. And so far, Shinzo Abe has not spoke a word on this opinions, and a lot of his cabinet members are distancing, distancing themselves from him. It's kind of like a litmus test, I guess. Put this really crazy guy in power. Let him say what he wants. Let's see the reaction. If we can get away with that, well, hey, maybe some of us can be more uh, forceful. In, in our opinions. So it will remain to be seen if he actually get forced to resign or not. But he's not the only one uh, in NHK recently making very, very interesting um, statements. Uh, I think also one of the um, chair, one of the people on the board of NHK has also said something quite interesting. Uh, Mr. Naoki Harukata, I believe I'm saying that correctly, now, he, here's what he said when, when commenting on the Nanking Massacre. He says, in 1938, Chiang Kai-shek tried to publicize Japan's responsibility for the Nanking Massacre, but nations of the world ignore him. Why? Because it never happened. Wow. Now, it's totally incorrect. When it started to come out that what was going on, the world did know about it. Many nations knew about it. But at the time, the whole world was gripped in world war. So it got out, and a lot of people knew what was going on. But the whole world was preoccupied, trying not to be completely destroyed. So he's completely wrong about that. Of course the Nanking Massacre happened. You know, it's over 300,000 people were raped, murdered, and slaughtered during that period. So we have this ridiculousness going on in HK recently. These right-wing, mad, crazy-as-hell fascists are slowly, now, being put in bureaucratic positions. Because the fascists have their base now. They have their base of power with uh, Shinzo Abe and his fascist leadership. And the recent election of Tokyo governor, another fascist. And now it's starting to become bureaucratic. They're putting people into the unelected positions in government. So I expect things like this to continue. You're going to see more people in the Japanese government put into positions of power and going to come out and say things like this. So that's what we have going off in HK. Crazy right-wing fascist saying crazy right-wing fascist lies. So if you enjoyed this video, I do hope you will subscribe. You'll get lots of stuff like this. Plus a few little surprises from time to time. And until next time, this is me, John Dole, in Tokyo. Check it out.